I guess one of the, the major problems is climatic changes obviously influence uh, microclimates in particular environments. Um, one of the major uh, habitats that's been affected are montane environments. And as temperatures rise, uh, many of the microhabitats for, for plants which require sort of niche climatic regimes, uh, they either migrate upwards or they become extinct. And that's been one of the major problems in, on Mount Kenya, for example, the mountains of East Africa, but also in the Andes uh, and other uh, mountainous regions. And losing these, these um, you know, alpine specialists in particular may not seem like a big deal, but it does have a huge impact on global biodiversity because many of these mountain ranges house many uh, endemic and rare species. It's the same kind of thing, and certainly again in montane uh, environments, those that are niche speciali specialists at certain altitudes are being forced further and further and further uh, higher as temperatures uh, uh, increase. Um, but one of the biggest issues obviously is habitat loss and habitat loss and conversion. Um, as forests become drier, for example, they become more prone to fire, um, and so many of the animals that occur within uh, tend to lose their habitat, and then you know you have the concomitant problems of human wildlife conflict and, and uh, extirpation. And so the obvious, obvious classic is, example is the polar bear. Um, loss of the Arctic ice, although not a forest environment as we know, um, has had a huge impact on the, on the uh, uh, polar bear populations of, of the Arctic. I guess one of the major um, possible hotspots, if you like, of, of climate change affecting biodiversity is the Sundarbans, the mangrove region of Bangladesh. Many, many people rely on that area for their livelihoods. It's also the last vestige of the um, uh, tiger for that region. And ultimately, losing the two, the, the livelihood aspect um, and uh, the, the conservation value of the tiger would be somewhat catastrophic and there have been numerous floods there in the past which give us a taste for how things will be in the future um, and those people living in the Sundarbans will be forced to move off into uh, elsewhere in Bangladesh and there simply is no more land so in terms of cultivation, habitation it's going to be very difficult for them to to integrate and one key aspect of climate change that was often underlooked is we're going to be seeing in the next 20 to 50 years millions and millions and millions of climate change refugees, environmental refugees in fact, and you know they're going to be impinging onto areas already habited, areas already being farmed, and so there's going to be a considerable estimated you know, social conflict that, that accompanies those, those, those migration patterns. The real value of biodiversity in terms of climate change in, in, in its ability to adapt is it provides resilience and a great example is that when uh, you have periods of agricultural um, shortfalls or famine um, due to climate induced events, often people rely back on biodiversity for their sustenance, for foods, medicines and, and what they require a more diversified, if you like, livelihoods portfolio which biodiversity really does provide and ultimately that is key to, to the survival of many rural communities, the, the ability to fall back on the safety nets of biodiversity if you like. So one of the major impacts of, uh, of climate change and biodiversity loss is essentially um, related to our food security. We currently rely on only three major crops for 50% 50, 50 of our nutritional intake and these are uh, wheat, maize and rice. The main problem with relying on so, such a narrow cropping base is that those particular crops are very vulnerable to climate change. We saw major um, food shortages in 2008 based on uh, climate vicissitudes in, in Russia and Pakistan uh, and today the corn crop in the, in the US is failing which is going to have a huge impact on food prices and global security. The Arab Spring was brought about because of the huge increase in food prices in 2008. So there are not only sort of biological and social implications of climate change and biodiversity loss, but there are also strong political and social unrest issues that are, that are very, very much linked as well. And one major way of doing so is many of our uh, partner centres are working with local farmers to protect agrobiodiversity and other forms of biodiversity. And essentially, 
um, working with local people who have the traditional knowledge and long-term commitment to, to um, uh, conserving these, these, uh, this agriculture biodiversity is key. In fact, much of the agrobiodiversity agri we're concerned about are conserved by women and women farmers, female farmers, tend to be much more uh, diversified in terms of their cropping portfolio and have a long-term investment in, in using their knowledge to protect many of this agrobiodiversity that we're, we're interested in. It needs to be a much more um, nuanced focus on biodiversity and climate change linkages rather than just saying you know, climate change is having an effect and the sea levels are rising because biodiversity provides the basis of life on earth and the intrinsic value of biodiversity is often one misunderstood and secondly undervalued and the changes that are occurring because of climate change are extremely important and we need to understand them better.